number 11, we're finding um, the volume by revolving the area between these curves about the line y is equal to 1. So let's draw these curves. Um, we'll draw our y is equal to x squared first. Um, So let's draw this, um, kind of zoom in. Y is equal to x squared. So we have here um, 1, 1, and then 2, 4, and so on. So this is our curve, y is equal to x squared. Our next curve is um, x is equal to y squared. Now for this curve here, um, maybe I'm going to do it in darker blue. For this curve here, it looks the same, this exact same behavior, except we're going to flip it over um, because now it's like y is a function, uh, sorry, x is a function of y. So our image in our domain, it gets flipped over and we are going to draw this like, um, like so. And this one is going to, to go here and then let's see. Yeah. So it should go like so. And like so, and yeah. So that was actually a terrible drawing, but hopefully you guys get it. X is equal to Y squared. And let's see what's our other curve about the line Y equals one. So we're gonna have to zoom in this pretty nicely because it's just this tiny little area here and then we're revolving about the line y is equal to 1. So the line uh, y is equal to 1 is here. This is y is equal to 1. So when we're revolving it about this line, um, let's see, are we integrating it with respect to x or are we integrating it with respect to y? Well, when we're doing this, we're we're creating these disks that go like this. And here, I'll draw it in pink. We're creating these. Um, maybe that was not a good idea. So we're creating these disks, right? That when we revolve them, they are going to look something like um, goes like this. And then it should go something like this, yeah. So this is what our disk kind of should look like when we revolve it, right? And um, we can see that the width of it, so it does have a little thickness. Maybe I'm going to shade it in. It does have a little thickness, and that thickness it goes this way, it is a chunk of the x-axis, like a little dx. So we can see that we're going to um, integrate it with respect to x, right? And then this goes, because they interact at 0, they go, this goes from 0 all the way to 1. So our integral um, goes from 0 to 1, and our area here, we're just taking... We're just taking... Um, the area of the bigger circle, which is of radius 1, right, minus the area of the smallest circle, which is R2. So our area here is just um, pi R1 squared minus pi R2 squared. Okay, so let's see. We're, we're not quite done yet, right, because what is R1? Well, R1 is the distance from the green curve all the way to the uh, to the orange curve, right? So it's like we're we're doing um, our distance here is one 
minus whatever that curve is. One minus that curve, which is this, this little distance here. Um, so we're doing one minus x squared. That is our r1. This is equal to r1. What about r2? Well, first of all, we do need to um, express this blue curve in terms as a function of y, right? So all we're doing here is we're taking the square root of both sides. So we have that square root of x is equal to y, and that is our function. Um, so once more, for this one, r2 is just 1 minus uh, 1 minus square root of x. That is our r2. And then if you're asking me, hey, why 1 minus? Because what we're saying is um, we, we're taking this full distance, right? This would be radius 1, but we don't want that. We want 1 minus... Um, say this point, this point is in the green line, right? We want one minus this height. So the minus will be this leftover, this little leftover chunk, which is actually our radius, right? Um, let me just remove this stuff. So yeah, once we have this, we are ready to set up our integral. So our integral goes from zero to one of pi r1 squared, so, because it is a, a disk, right, it is a circle, uh, x squared squared minus uh, 1 minus root x squared, and then there's a pi outside, can't forget, and all of this times um, dx. So, let's integrate this. Actually, let's just clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to put the pi outside, and then I'm going to expand these, okay? I'm going to expand 1 minus x squared. So to expand it, I'll just FOIL it. So that is x to the power of 4 minus, uh, minus x squared minus x squared minus 2x squared plus 1. And then minus, let's see, uh, root x times root x, that is x, and then minus minus. So plus 2 root x, and then minus 1, and all of this times dx. All right, we're ready to integrate it. And actually, we'll just um, cancel out this plus 1 and this minus 1. So our integral is, let's see, pi times x to the power of 5 over 5 minus 2x cubed over 3 minus x squared over 2, and then let's see, plus 2 times, um, this is x to the 3 halves, and then times, let's see, divided by 2 thirds, so times 3 over 2, right? So we're going to remove this 2, and then times 3. Yeah, because it would be like 3 halves x to the, sorry, 2 thirds, what am I doing? So 2 thirds, right? So 2 times 2 divided by 3 is actually, should be 4 thirds. And all of this evaluated from 0 to 1. All right, so this is, we're just going to apply the upper boundary because the lower boundary, everything's going to go to 0 and it will disappear. So this is pi times, let's see, 1 fifth um, minus 2 thirds minus uh, 1 half. And then plus, plus four thirds, which is equal to, let's see, um, two thirds pi times one fifth um, plus two thirds, and then minus one half, right? So when we take the least common multiple, that is, let's see, that's 30, and then divided by five, so six plus. 10 times 2, oh, and that's, yeah, plus 20, um, and then minus, let's see, minus 15, yeah, which should give us here um, 11 pi over 30, yeah, and 11 pi over 30 cubic units. So let me zoom out for you guys to see, and that is it.